hello, hello, and welcome. This is Beverly Fells Jones, the Silver Fox of Consciousness, and I want to welcome you wherever you are, what time of day it is, who cares, you are listening to this show. I am an author, speaker, seminar leader, hypnotist coach, a confidant to many, a guiding force for many. And today, I just want to share with you some more insights that I have had. In fact, today, I chose a story from the Manifestations True Stories of Bringing the Imagined into Reality. I sat down to say, okay, so which story am I going to do today? And I just want you all to know that I am reading the stories with you and then I'm reading to pick them just before I decide to record. So I wanted to do that because I wanted you to get the full reaction that I had as I read the story. Now I haven't been I haven't recorded anything or uploaded anything in a while and here's the reason why. I'm back in school and college level and this thing is wearing me out (laughs) you know I don't want to admit that I am of the older generation and there's a lot of times I know I have a ton of energy to share however so for those of you who haven't heard I am in a pastry certification class I'm taking courses to become certified pastry chef. And we'll talk about why and all that stuff later. But the one class is on Monday and Wednesdays, and it's five hours and 20 minutes in the kitchen. That's getting lecture, actually cooking, baking, trying all these things, and trying the food. (laughs) And then cleaning up afterward to actually I've been really upset lately because the the class in front of us do not do a cleanup I went to use the mixer last night and it was a total mess I mean I was you know chef looked at me and like I said this is unacceptable and I don't know what you need to do to talk to the instructor in the previous class but they need to be cleaning up. I mean, it's it was dirty. I mean, it was like dough all over it. So, okay, I'm going to stop ranting and raving on that little thing for a moment. But what I'm saying is I've been really tired. Um, that's one class. And then the other class is taking me anywhere from 10 to 12 hours a week. And it's an online class. And it's just interesting. But I'm not giving up. It's just that it's making me tired, and therefore I haven't been taking care of you with my podcast, but I'm working at getting a little better and see what we can do about that. Anyway, (laughs) so please forgive me for not being like consistent. Um, You know, Mondays are supposed to be the day, but my classes are Monday, Wednesday, and then I spent all day Monday morning just trying to get my homework done and get prepared for class. Yeah, the class is 10 and a half, 10 and three quarters hours a week, but that's just class time. I'm spending anywhere between five, ooh, five and seven hours just in prep. So it's just taken a lot of my time and energy. Um, So that's my excuse and I'm staying with it. (laughs) Anyway, let me get started here. So the Manifestations book, as I as I mentioned in the previous um, audio, is true stories of people who have manifested things in their life. 
versus all these things you get on the YouTube and other places that how to manifest this and how to bring this into your life and they're talking and they may give you examples and a lot of times the ones I've listened to have not been on the up and up is what I want to say. I want you to be realistic. And yes, you can manifest a million dollars. You can manifest a hundred thousand dollars. You can manifest ten thousand dollars. But let's talk about how that really happens. And today's story is like I was just smiling from the very beginning of the story. This one is by Christy Blakeway. Now, it is just the, I, I, I just want to say, this is one of those stories where you look at it and you say, I can do that. I can relate to that. And so Christy, and that's spelled with a K, is a school principal in Maple Ridge, British Columbia. So she is a northern neighbor. And she lives with her husband and two sons. She is the founder of Beyond Hello, and Hello is all caps, a student-run initiative that helps the homeless in Canada's poorest neighborhood reconnect with family through greeting cards, phone calls, and reunions. She's the author of Beyond Hello, Rekindling the Human Spirit One Conversation at a Time, a TEDx speaker, an Olympic torchbearer and winner of the YWCA Women of Distinction Award. Christy encourages everyone to step outside their comfort zone, engage in soulful conversation, and connect with compassion. She blogs regularly. Now listen to her blog. It is at beyondhello.org. And I'll put that in the description. So beyondhello.org. And the name of her contribution to Manifestations, True Stories of Bringing the Imagined into Reality is Butterfly butterfly Dreams. And she starts it out with a quotation. And I absolutely love the quote. So, Christy, if you're listening, I love this quote. What if I fail? Oh, my darling, what if you fly? And this was from Erin Hansen. I love that. What if I fail? Well, what if you fly? So in other words, Erin Hansen is saying, stop looking at the negative. Stop trying to, you know, talk yourself out of something because what if you do succeed and help others and you know beyond hello helping the homeless the poorest people reconnect so let me start books are magical we can all think of our favorite story as a child or a book that inspired us challenged us or shifted our thinking and you know you all know that i love books right so this this opening statement in her story was just like, yeah, I can relate to that. So let's see how much more we can relate to. Books offer an escape where readers can cuddle up, lose track of time, and feel like they are part of a story. For as long as I can remember, I have wanted to create that magic and write a book. So I'm stopping. How many of you out there want to write a book you say I have a book in me but I don't know I don't know if I can write a book that long and I'm going to tell you personally Beverly here telling you that you can write a book of 60 pages 50 pages you can write short stories if all you've got is short stories write short stories if you're a journal if you journal check your journal out and see if there's a story in there Going back to Christy, 
I love the idea of spreading good in our world and wanted to write a book that could give back to those in need. Writing a book hung in limbo as a lifetime goal. One I imagined, but one I did not know how to achieve. Uh, How many of you out there have something you wanted to do and didn't know how to achieve it? I can look back on my life. This is Beverly speaking. And there are a number of things I did not do because I did not know what, how to start, how to get it going, and thinking about how to, who to ask, who could tell me how to do it. Okay. Christy says, as a school principal, my life is busy. Spare moments are infrequent, and I have to be quite intentional in finding time to write. I started by creating a blog. Luckily, people other than my mom (laughs) began to read and share my work, and I slowly gained confidence as a writer. I blogged about education and documented my students' experiences helping the homeless in Canada's poorest neighborhood. Blogging became my risk-free way to share my thoughts with the outside world. I realized that taking the time to write gave me the ability to organize my thoughts and determine what mattered most to me. Despite this, the thought of writing a book still seemed daunting. Who would my audience be? What would I write about? How would I find a publisher? I shifted my focus and spent time sharing stories through public speaking engagement. My book remained a distant dream. So how many of you out there feel the same way that Christy did? You know, asking, who would buy my book? You know, I don't have anything to talk about. And what what would I write about? I'm boring. I don't know very much. You'd be surprised at how much you know. So Christy says, as my life continued to run at a hectic pace as a mom, a wife, and a principal, I began to realize that writing actually helped me to slow down. Writing soothed my soul and grounded me. I began to see writing as a gift of self-compassion, and I dreamed of the day I could combine my love of storytelling and writing. Despite this, My dream of a published book was still in the same day column and not something I imagined in the short term. As I ignored my internal nudge, I noticed I was developing a strain habit. Each weekend, I would head to Costco under the premise that I was gathering our weekly groceries. Once inside, I would let my cart drift toward the book aisle. Now, I want you to pay attention to what she says next. And I want you to think about incorporating this in your life. And I've told you about this before. Okay. Here's what she did. I would pretend to shop for books, but actually... I was imagining my book nestled neatly amongst the bestsellers. I was beginning to manifest my future. In February of 2019, an ad popped into my Facebook feed advertising an International Women's Summit hosted by Celebrate Your Life events. A friend and I signed up eager to hear inspiring speakers such as Elizabeth Gilbert, Glendon Doyle, and Cheryl Strayed. The event was magical, renewing, and uplifting. On the second day, I heard Zanab Zelby speak. Zanab spoke about her work helping women from war-torn countries. Years into her work after meeting every typical measure of success, she realized she wasn't telling her story. She was inviting women around the world to be vulnerable and speak out, but she wasn't sharing her personal story. In this moment, I saw my book. Like Zanab, I had been writing about others for years, finding ways to help, but I wasn't weaving in my individual story. The word weave stuck in my mind, 
and I started to see chapters unfold right in front of me. As ideas began to flow, I found a quiet corner in the hotel lobby and started to write logical ideas in sequential orders. Unfamiliar with visualization, I focused on practical steps I would need to take. As I sat, concentrating on my list, I experienced one of the most powerful moments of my life with no warning. I visualized a bright yellow butterfly rising up, floating right through my mind. I sat there stunned. What had happened? Where did this image come from? What did this mean? The image was so vivid. I knew I was meant to experience it. It was a symbol of transformation. I headed home, inspired by the conference and ready to start writing. I knew I was on the right path. I set up my writing space, free of clutter, near our front window. I perched a ceramic yellow butterfly on my desk as a reminder of my call to write. It became my inspiration piece. Two weeks into this journey, Kira Schaefer from As You Wish Publishing popped up on the Celebrate Your Life Facebook page. She reached out to CYL guests and invited us to join her in her collaborative book, Inspirations, 101 Uplifting Stories for Daily Happiness. I signed up that day. Kira and her husband, Todd, walked me through the journey of becoming a collaborative author and helped me understand how a book goes from the idea phase to print. By June of 2019, I took the leap and signed up with As You Wish Publishing to write my book. As I began to write in my newly created space, I heard a tap on the window. As I looked up, the largest yellow butterfly I have ever seen circled through our front porch, danced in the sunlight, and returned to rest on our window pane. I smiled, knowing it was meant to be. In November 2019, my book Beyond Hello was released. My dream came true and my book now sells on Amazon and in local bookstores. With each book sold, a donation is made to buy a meal for someone living on the streets. My book may not be at Costco yet, but I will keep manifesting and hoping my yellow butterfly guides me where I am meant to go. We each have the ability to listen to our hearts and turn the imagined into reality. And she quotes Barbara Haynes Howard here. Just when the caterpillar thought the world was over, it became a butterfly. I hope that this story inspires you to live your dream and to manifest into your life that which you desire. Christy talked about the fact she didn't know about visualization and that visualizing your desire and visualizing what you want will help you get your subconscious mind on board and the universe will help you become that which you ardently, absolutely desire to be. This is Beverly Fells Jones and I encourage you to subscribe to hit the follow button on Spreaker, subscribe on YouTube, and I will see you on the next video. Thank you for listening today. Please share the link to this show with your friends and family so that they can learn how to be the best that they can be. Visit my website at commandingyourlife.com And follow me on Facebook. Have any suggestions for the show? Just contact me by emailing Beverly at commandingyourlife.com. Be sure to join me on the next episode. As you have believed, let it be done to you. And it is so.